The new development bank, also known as the BRICS Bank, has made a number of new senior appointments. Vladimir Kazbakov has been appointed the vice president and COO of the bank. Uh, King Wu Zhao has also been appointed as VP and CAO, while South Africa's Leslie Mazdop has been reappointed as vice president and the CFO of the bank. The bank was set up to fund infrastructure and sustainable development projects in BRICS, other emerging economies, as well as in developing countries. Well, to discuss these latest developments and more, I'm joined by Leslie Mazdob, the VP and CFO at the BRICS Bank. Thank you very much, Leslie, for joining us and congratulations on your reappointment. So apart from resignation or death, how often are these appointments made at the bank and why do you have a structure where there's so many VPs? Um, firstly, as you know, this bank was established in 2015. In the Articles of Agreement, which is the founding legal documents of the bank, it set out there that after uh, a five-year term, the bank will have a new president. So as you know, we have quite a unique construct in the sense that the bank is equally owned. So Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa, we all will have a chance, for example, to occupy the presidency of the bank. So the first president, inaugural president, Mr. K.V. Kamath, was from India. His term expired last year, and by rotation, Brazil uh, now has the presidency. Next time around in 2025, Russia will assume the presidency, and then it will be South Africa's turn in 2030. The vice presidents also have a uh, rotation um, in 2021, which is uh, uh, July, the 6th of July, last yesterday, was the final day of our contracts, uh, the vice presidents. But because of the unusual circumstances or exceptional circumstances of COVID, as you know, most of our countries, South Africa, Brazil, India, with the exception of China, obviously, uh, all the countries are still ravaged by uh, COVID. So in the interest of continuity, preserving the institutional memory in the bank, uh, I was asked to, to continue to serve uh, as a vice president. Understood. And just on the point that you raise around the whole COVID issue, what interventions has the bank been making to assist in this horrible pandemic? So in 2020, our entire activities as a bank has been defined by uh, COVID-19. The bank significantly increased its lending and its support uh, to our BRICS uh, member countries. We made available last year $10 billion. That's $2 billion for each of the BRICS uh, countries. And the $2 billion, Anompolelo, was divided into two parts. Firstly, we provided $1 billion uh, support, COVID relief support to the countries to help with the additional public health related expenditure. So, for example, additional money was needed for ventilators, uh, for protective gear, uh, for the additional uh, hospital uh, uh, um, uh, buildings that needed to be erected and so on. So, that was the first billion. And we we provided um, that to all of the five BRICS uh, countries. The second billion dollar support, which we just provided to South Africa uh, a, a matter of weeks uh, ago, was more focused on economic recovery. Uh, the countries are now sort of emerging. South Africa obviously has a new wave, I should add, but economic recovery is the focus of governments and also of the bank. We want to support the existing programs and efforts to uh, to preserve and retain existing jobs. A lot of small and medium and micro businesses have, have basically gone under, as you know. So we're very much focused now on job uh, uh, preservation, but almost every activity of the bank is now focused on COVID. We did not do our traditional work, which is, you know, building of roads and airports and uh, additional energy and, and so on. In 2020, it was 100% uh, COVID because this crisis is affecting our countries in a very fundamental way, as you know. Exactly. And of course, you need to deal with the fire while it's burning and then proceed thereafter. Exactly right. But from a strategic point of view, looking forward, what new strategies or reinforced strategies is the bank looking at going forward? So the new development banks, our traditional mandate is sustainable infrastructure. So we want to help our countries to put in place the necessary hard economic infrastructure that is critical, as you know, for stimulating new economic uh, growth. And a few of our countries have particular 
particularly challenging uh, macroeconomic environments. South Africa is one. We went into a deep recession uh, last year. Uh, so is uh, Brazil. Both South African Brazil, by the way, went through also credit uh, uh, rating uh, downgrades. Um, uh, India, as you know, also the pandemic struck uh, India very, very uh, hard. Uh, the country is, is uh, you know, back in sort of growth mode, but but the the um, uh, COVID numbers as, as, as certainly still very alarming. But going forward in terms of the bank's uh, priorities, we're going to focus a great deal on sustainability and green infrastructure. As you know, most of our economies have, are now faced with a new set of uh, challenges which, which deals with, uh, which has got to do with climate change. So we need to reorient our economies, change business models towards uh, carbon neutrality. And we and South Africa has set certain targets in that regard. And we're hoping to, to have a big focus on helping our countries, for example, with, in South Africa's case, to green our energy uh, supply. More than 90% of our energy supply today comes from, from ESCOM, as you know, and most of our, our, co- our uh, 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 power stations are coal-fired, uh, which have, leaves a huge uh, emission, carbon emission uh, footprint. So one of our key objectives going forward is to redirect most of our lending towards sustainability. The second major uh, focus for the bank going forward is to also lend more to the private sector and to crowd in more funding from the private sector. Because lending to governments, as you know, because of COVID, governments have been borrowing more, leaving them little fiscal space. And in South Africa's case also, as you know, our budget deficit doubled from 2019 to 2020. So the government does not have the space to continue to borrow from banks like ourselves, World Bank, African Development Bank, and so on. But for infrastructure, we can lend to private sector actors so we could build you know, additional uh, um, independent power producers. We can support them to build new solar uh, uh, power, for example, in South Africa, wind power, and, and, and so on. So that's going to be a second big priority. The third big strategic priority for us going forward is to expand the bank. As I said earlier on, the bank is a BRICS creation, and it's still to today uh, only owned by these five countries. But the process has now started to expand the bank and for the bank to become a more global institution. So starting before the end of this year, you will see announcements of us allowing in more countries. Other African countries, for example, will also join the bank, other Latin American countries, Asian countries. So we will become a much more strategic global uh, uh, emerging markets financial institution. Very ambitious indeed, and uh, all the very best in the strategic endeavors. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Marsdorp. That was Leslie Marsdorp. He's the Vice President and CFO at the BRICS Bank.